Listen Nutrition, a guide to food and health for young people with Alstrom syndrome. My name is Hazel and I'm a dietitian at Birmingham Children's Hospital, working with young people and families to advise and support on how best to keep you healthy and active. I'm also trained in helping young people and adults to understand and make sense of their feelings. Learning more about food will help you make the best choices to keep you well for a long, active and busy life. This recording will talk about what healthy eating is all about and what role different foods have in your body. I am going to give you information about what happens to foods and drink once you eat them. This is known as digestion. That's D I G E S T I O N. And then you will hear about the importance of a healthy weight and keeping active. There is also some information about understanding your relationship with food and some exercises later on to help you work with those emotions. Most of us enjoy eating, whether it is a meal with friends and family or something you eat when you are on your own. Sometimes we eat a food just because we feel like it and it tastes nice, even when we are not hungry. We can feel guilty about eating some foods and this can leave us feeling fed up and sad. If you find yourself eating a food just for comfort, remember, eating a food doesn't stop you being upset. When we feel like this, the best thing to do is to be our own best friend and be kind and gentle to yourself. You are just being human. Talking to someone you trust about your feelings can also help. We live in a country where food is plentiful and there is so much variety and temptation around. Our ancestors, who lived several thousands of years ago, before there were supermarkets, takeaways and tempting high-fat and high-sugar foods in brightly coloured packaging, had to first hunt or pick food and there were times when food was in short supply. These people had an inbuilt sensing system to seek out fat and sugar. And we still have that system in our brain, even though it is no longer useful. This is one reason why it is easy to eat too much. Food in its natural state, which needs lots of chewing, is less likely to be eaten in large amounts and is more filling. So this is helpful to understand when you are choosing what to eat. Choosing food, which is in its natural state, such as plain lean meat or chicken or fish, eggs, beans, lentils, vegetables, salads and fruits, instead of things like pies, crisps, puddings and cakes, which do not need much chewing, means you are much more likely to fill up on healthy foods and have a healthy weight. Food, which your body does not need to use straight away, will be put into storage as fat around your tummy and body organs, including the liver, which can sometimes cause you health problems. What is meant by healthy eating? When it comes to keeping healthy, the best advice is to eat a balanced diet with a wide variety of foods to make sure you get enough of the different parts of food called nutrients that your body needs. Aim to only have a small amount of high fat, high sugar, salty and processed foods. By processed foods, I'm talking about biscuits, cakes, savoury snacks like cheese puffs and things like chicken nuggets. 
the less processed a food is, the more likely it is that it is going to be better for health and have no additives, preservatives and colourings. Examples of natural foods which are not processed in a factory are eggs, meat, rice, potatoes, milk, fruit and vegetables. You may have heard of the term superfood. There is no proper definition or meaning of what a superfood is. And the European Union, also known as the EU, has banned the use of the word on packaging, unless a claim is backed up by good quality research. A number of well-known brands of food have had to stop using the word on their packaging. There is no real evidence that superfoods exist at all. That is to say, foods that will keep us healthy, stop illness or save our life. Here's an activity for you to do. Add up the number of processed foods that you've had today. If it is three or less, this is very good. But if more than six, then I would like you to think about whether you can make better choices as a move towards making the balance of the food you eat a bit better. Perhaps you might like to talk to mum or dad or an older sister or brother about what you eat as a family and how you could change choices for everyone to make your meals healthier. The Eat Well Plate and Nutrients. Next, I'm going to talk about healthy eating in more detail. In the UK, we teach healthy eating using the Eat Well Plate Guide, which is a picture of a plate with five different coloured sections, which shows us different types of food. Within each section, there are pictures of foods we need to choose from to keep healthy. The sections are different sizes, and this shows how much of the foods in each of the groups we need to eat each day. About a third needs to be from the starchy carbohydrate group and includes bread, rice, pasta, breakfast cereals and potatoes. A third from fruit and vegetables and the last third is made up of a section for milk, cheeses, yogurts and a small size section for meat, fish, beans, eggs, and other non-milk, high-protein foods. There is a very small section for food and drinks, high in fats and sugars. Let's now look at each of the sections in the Eat Well plate in more detail. Firstly, bread, rice, pasta, potatoes and other starchy carbohydrates. Starchy carbohydrates or you might hear the word carbs being used instead, are a really good source of energy and also provide you with some calcium for your bones and teeth and B vitamins to help with the release of energy from food. It is better if you can eat the higher fibre foods in this group, such as wholemeal and whole grain cereals and bread and skins on potato for your bowel to work properly and to help fill you up. Good choices are wholemeal or brown breads, brown rice and pasta and cereals such as porridge, whole wheat biscuits and any cereal containing bran. A serving from this group is needed at each meal. If you do not like some or all of the high fibre starchy carbohydrates. It is still important to eat carbohydrates, but choose bread with a mixture of white and wholemeal flour, white rice or pasta, as these still provide many of the valuable nutrients for health. Other types of carbs are those foods which contain natural sugars, for example, the sugars in fruit and milk. And these are okay for the body, as they are not found in these foods in very large amounts. I will talk about these foods a bit later. 
if you have diabetes or are testing your blood glucose levels because they are sometimes higher than normal, you will learn more about what happens in your body when you eat foods containing carbs. No young person should ever cut down too much on carbohydrates and your dietitian will talk to you about how much you need and help you to plan and make the best choices. Can you remember how much of the starchy carbs you need to eat each day? Is it a half, a third or a quarter of your daily food? A third is the right answer. What good starchy carbs have you had today? Next to talk about is the fruit and vegetable section. We all need to aim to have an average of five or more portions of fruit and vegetables, including any raw or salad vegetables, every day. Fruit and vegetables are full of different protective vitamins and minerals and also contain fibre, which you may remember fill you up. The role of fruit and veg is very complicated, but we know from medical research that you are more likely to keep healthy if you eat plenty from this group, especially the vegetables and salad. One portion is only a handful. That would be a small side salad, a medium carrot, a good serving spoon of vegetables, an apple or orange, or 10 or 12 grapes or strawberries. If you're struggling to eat enough fruit and veg, you can drink half a small glass of fruit juice to make up one portion of fruit and a portion of vegetables could be a bowl of tomato or vegetable soup. Even canned spaghetti, baked beans, tomato sauce, onions hidden away in spaghetti bolognese and curries, a small box of raisins or three dried apricots count towards your five a day. So you need two to three portions of fruit and two to three portions or more of vegetables and salad every day. How many portions of fruit and vegetables did you have yesterday? If you had five, this is excellent, and three to four portions is good. If you did not manage to have more than two, then aim for three portions every day for a few weeks. Then plan so you get to five or more as a daily thing. Now to look at the section on the Eat Well Plate Guide showing milk and dairy foods. These are the foods which are high in calcium, which with the help of vitamin D and other minerals, magnesium being one of them, is made into our bones and teeth. Vitamin D is only found in a few foods, such as egg yolks, salmon and vegetable spreads. But we also get a supply of vitamin D from sunshine working on our skin. You can think of our bones as being like the scaffolding on a building, keeping it secure, a frame onto which muscles are attached and our important body organs are protected. Without this strong framework of bones called our skeleton, we would be more like a jellyfish, which has no skeleton. By having three portions of calcium rich foods a day, you'll have plenty of calcium for the body. One portion is a glass of milk, a small slice of cheese, a yogurt or fromage frais. Small amounts of calcium are found in lots of other foods, such as bread and some fruit and vegetables. How many calcium rich foods do you usually have in one day? Do you need to have more? The last important section of the Eat Well plate is meat, fish, eggs, beans and other non-dairy high protein foods. Protein is needed by the body for the growth and repair of worn out parts of the body tissues 
mainly the mussels. This group also provides iron, which makes up part of the red blood cells and carries oxygen round the body. If you are short of iron, you can become anemic, which means you can become very tired and be poor at fighting infections. Anemia is common in young people and is treated with iron medicine. You need one or two servings from this group every day and most people manage to eat enough of these foods easily. Fish is a great choice to have once or twice a week and good choices are grilled fish or fish fingers, potato topped fish pie or tuna in a sandwich. Fresh or canned salmon has a special type of fat in it called omega. That's O-M-E-G-A. Omega fats, which helps to protect your heart. And it is known as an oily fish. Other oily fish are sardines and mackerel. If you do not eat meat or fish or are vegetarian, you can still use the protein and iron from beans, lentils or dal, eggs, nuts and green vegetables. And some breakfast cereals will provide you with extra iron. If you are vegetarian and not sure whether you are eating the right type of foods, you can ask your dietitian about this. Examples of these are soya, Soya products like soya mince or tofu or soya milk with added calcium and vitamins. Corn, that's Q-U-O-R-N. And that's made from something which is a bit like a mushroom. The very small section of the Eat Well plate which is left to talk about is food and drinks high in fat or sugar or both. In this section are the sugary foods, fats and oils used in cooking and on bread and anything that contains both fat and sugar, such as crisps, biscuits, cake, chocolate and sweets. Most of us like to eat some of these foods, but if we have too many, we can put on too much weight, which is not good for our health. If your weight is in the normal range for your age, one or two small portions from this group every day will be okay, as long as you make sure that you are having enough of all the foods from the four sections I have explained. You do not need to have sugar and sugary foods for energy, as the starchy carbs are broken down to release energy. It is easy to eat these foods because they taste good, apart from a small amount of fats and oils that are important for health because they contain the fat-soluble vitamins A, D and E. We can be healthy without many of these foods. Cutting out almost all of these foods and only having a small amount occasionally will help you to control your weight. It is fine to have a few more treats on a day when it is a birthday or celebration like Eid or Christmas, or on a family day out. You and your family will be given advice and guidance about treat foods, and a few every week will be okay. Which treat foods do you like to choose, and why is it important not to have too many of them? I will just mention salt and salty foods, because you may hear that too much salt is bad for your heart, and if you have high blood pressure. This is only partly true because the causes of high blood pressure are complicated. All of us will benefit from not having too much salt in our food. So what can you do? Firstly, always taste your meal before you add any salt to it, as you may not need any extra. Your family may not use much salt in cooking food, which is great. And the salt we get naturally from many foods 
is okay. Many highly processed foods such as deli meats and ready meals have quite a high salt content so try to only have these occasionally. The advice is to use only the amount of salt you need to make the meal taste good and you will get used to having less salt. Aim to have fresh home cooked foods when you can. I will now talk about drinks. Drinks are important to mention but are not included within the Eat Well Plate Guide. Your body needs at least six to eight drinks a day and water is the best drink of all. Amazingly, about two thirds or 66% of your body is water. And we need to keep putting water back into the body for it to work at its best and to help you work hard at school or college. We are not very good at knowing when we need to drink. So you will need to make sure you include regular drinks. One at each meal or soon afterwards and one in between each meal and at least one before bed is a great start. By the time you feel thirsty, you are already short of water, also known as fluid. As well as drinking some water each day, good choices of drinks are no added sugar or low calorie squashes or very low sugar flavored waters with less than half a gram or 0.5 grams of sugar per 100 mils. Semi-skim milk, it's the one with the green top, or skimmed milk, this has a red top, is also good. If you drink tea and coffee, these are also good, but if you like a sweet taste, use a small amount of an artificial sweetener. For example, Candoral, Truvia, or Splendor, instead of sugar. Fizzy diet drinks such as Diet Coke or Diet Tango are all right occasionally but they do take valuable calcium from your bones and dissolve tooth enamel because they are so high in acids. The safest way to protect your teeth and keep your dentist happy is to brush your teeth twice a day in the morning and last thing at night and then to only have fizzy diet drinks as an occasional treat. Have fizzy drinks at a meal time if you can. Drink it really cold with ice to dilute the acid and if possible use a straw. This will save your teeth from any damage from these types of drinks. How many drinks did you have yesterday? If you had six or more this is good. If you had less than this, you need to drink more. Perhaps keeping a drink near to you will make it easier to drink a little at a time all through the day. Why is it important to drink enough for your body? I'm going to go through a meal plan for one day to show you how the Eat Well plate works in real life. For breakfast, a bowl of porridge made with semi-skim milk with sliced banana or apple added or toast with low-fat spread. Lunchtime is a chicken or egg and salad wholemeal wrap served with carrot sticks and followed by a diet yoghurt and two satsumas. After school you may be hungry so fruit or a piece of toast or an occasional small packet of crisps, counted as one of your treat foods, would be fine if your evening meal is hours away. For the evening meal, spaghetti bolognese with plenty of vegetables included. That's onion, canned tomatoes, tomato paste, mushrooms, or perhaps a vegetable curry with rice. For pudding, a homemade or bought low fat and low sugar rice pudding would be a great choice. During the evening as a snack, 10 to 12 grapes or a wedge of melon. There will be a little gap now for a minute or so 
to allow you to think out a healthy meal you might like, which will fit in with the Eat Well plate. Starch your carbs, a portion of high protein food, one or two vegetables or a salad, and something from the dairy group, and also some fruit. Don't forget to include a drink. So a plan for the whole day using the Eat Well Plate Guide means that you will be having starchy carbohydrate at each meal, five or more servings of fruit and vegetables, three servings of milk or other dairy foods, one or more servings from the meat, fish, eggs and beans group, and if you like, and it is in your eating plan, one small treat from the foods high in fats and sugars group. Chewing your food slowly and thoroughly is a good thing to do because this helps digestion, which will be discussed next. The more chewing you have to do, the more your gut will send messages back to your brain to tell you that you are filling up and do not need more food. You need to be patient though and wait a while because it takes about 20 minutes to happen. So take time to enjoy your meal. So now you have a good idea what healthy eating is about and it's time to talk about what happens to food in the body and cover digestion. We need to eat to provide energy for the body and building materials for growth and repair. Food contains essential substances called nutrients which are usually in a form the body cannot use so need to be broken down into smaller parts and this is what is known as digestion. This all happens in the part of the body known as the gut. Digestion starts in the mouth. Once food is chewed it then continues down the food pipe to the stomach or you might call it your tummy. The stomach is a muscular structure a bit like a bag about the size of an adult fist and can hold about one and a half litres. After the stomach, food moves through to the small intestine. At all these stages of digestion, different enzymes are used to break down food into smaller bits, which can be used by your body. So, enzymes are very important and without them we cannot digest our food. There are many different enzymes and each one has a different job to do with the different kinds of proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Enzymes are a bit like people who have different jobs to do in a hospital. Further on, the large intestine or colon Make sure that enough water is left in the waste matter. This is known as faeces. That's F-A-E-C-E-S or poo, which can then be passed through to the last part of the gut called the rectum and eventually to the anus or back passage. If you have enough foods which contain fibre and drink enough, you will not have constipation and your body will work well. Constipation is when it is difficult to open your bowels and it might be uncomfortable for you and cause some pain in your tummy. Billions of harmless bacteria live in the colon and poo is made up of a third dead bacteria. A third is the stuff we cannot break down very well from food, including fibre, and a third is dead cells from the lining of the gut and bile. Bile is made by the liver and stored in the gallbladder and it breaks down fat into small droplets. You may have heard about probiotic yogurts and drinks which are advertised as giving your gut good bacteria and perhaps be wondering why we need extra if our bodies already have them. Sometimes we can get out of balance with our good bacteria, leaving the large bowel, the bit at the end of our gut, with too much of the bad type of bacteria, 
and giving us a feeling of being overfull and uncomfortable, called bloating, and sometimes you may have diarrhoea. These special types of yogurts can be useful for some young people, so ask about them if you have these symptoms. Food is moved through the gut by peristalsis, that's spelt P E R I S T A L S I S, that's peristalsis, which is the name given to describe the tightening and then relaxing of the gut muscles. And this is under the control of the brain. Incredibly, the smell and taste and even thinking about food causes the brain to kickstart digestion. Our mouths produce the liquid we call saliva and our stomach can make noises or rumble when we are hungry. Hunger and appetite signals are under the control of a special part of the brain. We know that the signals can be changed by things around us such as talking about food, smelling food, or even our mood can give us false signals of hunger. This is something to be aware of and you can check genuine hunger, if it is not a routine meal time, by asking yourself, is it less than three hours since you had anything to eat? Are you bored? Do you need to cheer yourself up because you feel sad, unhappy, or fed up? Is it just that you have thought about something you fancy eating, which is perhaps around, to buy or take from the kitchen or somewhere else? If the answer to one or more of these questions is yes, then this is not body hunger, but the hunger is of a different sort, known as emotional hunger. Learning how best to manage the false hunger signals takes time and practice. There will be family members and other adults around you that can help with this. And the dietitian and psychologist can also talk to you to help you manage your emotions. A useful tip to learn is that the false signals would disappear after about 20 minutes. So keep busy and distract yourself with an activity such as listening to music, talking to a friend or family member can help you. Work out a comfort menu, which will be all those things you can do to keep yourself busy and occupied when it is not the time for eating. It might be you can choose to chill out with a cosy blanket or hot water bottle if it is really cold. Plan a visit somewhere nice Keep busy with something you enjoy or have someone give you a manicure or pedicure. Perhaps having a gentle back and neck massage, a chat, a hug or listening to a book will be on your comfort list. It is known that in Alstrom syndrome it can be difficult and challenging to recognise the signals in the body which let you know when you have had enough to eat. This section is about being aware of your own body signals and using something called a hungerometer scale. Imagine a dial with numbers going from 1 to 10, where 1 means you are really very hungry, or whatever word you use when you can't imagine being hungrier could be starving or famished, and 10, which is when you are very full of food bursting, bloated or uncomfortable. Pick a number that is right for you between 1 and 10, which will be the number you choose to use when you are just right after eating food and satisfied, comfortable or in balance. It may be about number 6, 7 or 8, but this is your own hungerometer. So pick a number which is just right for you. Here are a few basic hints to help you make the most of your hungerometer. Do eat regularly through the day. 
and do not wait more than about four hours between one meal and the next one. Learn to eat when your hungerometer is at a three or four, when you are hungry but for the right reasons. You haven't eaten anything for at least three to four hours. If you have a choice about the food or meal you can have, think about the taste, texture, smell and how it feels in your mouth to help you work out what it is which will best satisfy your appetite and hunger. This will not always be possible if all the family are eating together and the food may not be in the house, but perhaps you get to choose sometimes, even if it is a choice of the healthy foods you are offered. Do I want crunchy, crisp, chewy or smooth? Does it need to be hot, room temperature or cold food? Do I feel like savoury, spicy, salty or sweet? Interestingly, the first mouthful of a food or meal gives us the most satisfying sensations and after that the effect gets less and less so that by the time you've eaten the fourth mouthful the flavours are hardly noticed. Use this understanding so that you can eat more slowly instead of just gobbling food down. Have you ever eaten food when it doesn't even seem to touch the sides of your mouth? It takes a bit of practice to learn how to eat in a different way, but you can learn this skill. Keep practicing using your hungerometer before, during and after eating and you will be better able to tune in to your body signals. Where you feel hunger signals will be special to you. Perhaps it is your mouth or throat area or is it a particular area of your tummy or are you someone that feels hunger in your head? Whatever you manage to do around controlling and tuning in to your own food signals is the best you can do at that time and that's fine. There is an exercise you can do at the end of this recording which is about food cravings. There is another exercise to try which is linked to the one I've just talked about and this is called mindful eating. This can be used when eating any food or meal, particularly if it is a treat as it helps you really appreciate the food or drink you are taking which can help you to eat just the right amount of food you need at any one time. Mindful eating is becoming really on trend at the moment and it just means being more in touch with the food you are actually eating. When eating your meal, take time to eat slowly and focus closely on the food you are eating, working out what are the different ingredients in the meal. Think about where some of the ingredients come from, where they are grown. Imagine what it would be like to be tasting the food for the first time, as if you had landed from another planet. Notice all these things with a newfound curiosity. Go through all the tastes and smells you can pick up on. Savoury, sweet, bitter, salty sour. Think about what the different textures are in your mouth. Crisp, chewy or soft. How does the food change in texture as you chew it in your mouth? What are some of your favourite food treats? Perhaps it's crisps or chocolate or cake or ice cream or some other food. Do you think you would like to try eating these foods in a different way with a parent or brother or sister or a friend trying out this mindful way of eating? Now to talk about being active. Moving around as much as possible and being active is a really good thing to do. 
and there is a lot of medical evidence to support this. Think about all the things that you do when you are not sleeping or sitting down, as it is all activity. Getting washed and dressed, going up and down stairs, walking, dancing, playing football or any other game, swimming, riding a bike or perhaps a horse even. And yes, even standing, perhaps talking to friends is all activity and great for your body health. The more you can do, the better for your body. If you have been sitting down for more than an hour, even just standing up for a minute or two is good. Have a good stretch of your arms and shake your legs one at a time to get the muscles working. If you feel a little unsteady, hold on to a chair or table. Exercise and activity of any sort helps your body and brain work better and can also help you to feel good inside, which is also known as improving your mood and well-being. It may be that you really enjoy sports or a particular activity such as walking or dancing. And then it will be easier for you to be active every day for at least an hour. This might be for an hour or more in one go, or with a break if you like. It could be for 15 minutes at a time with different activities at several times during the day. If you are not the sporty type and are much happier watching TV or playing on your computer, there is still much you can do to make a difference to your health. You can stand to watch TV or use the computer for perhaps a while or talk on the phone to a friend, even if this is only for a few minutes at a time. It is fine if you want to hold on to a chair for a little extra support and help with balance. You might start with a minute and build up to a little more gradually. It may be that there is an activity you might like to get involved with but don't know how or are not sure what is out there for you to try. Talk about this with your family, at the hospital appointments or at school as someone will be able to help. If you have been given any exercises to do by your physiotherapist it is important to find time to do these as well. If you have been very active one day, it is fine to be less active another day, but doing some activity every day is really important. Having rest times between active times is also okay. Make a plan to do something relaxing, like chilling out with a DVD or use the Xbox or computer as a reward for being active earlier. Work out a plan with your family so that everyone can support and encourage you. What activities and exercise do you enjoy? What one change can you make that will make you a bit more active? Is there a new activity you might like to find out more about? Ask someone at school or a mum or dad as they will be able to advise you. The next bit I am going to talk about is special to Alstrom syndrome and what we know about keeping healthy when you are living with this condition. We are all different shapes and sizes and all have different requirements for energy and nutrients to keep our bodies in good working order. Dietitians, doctors and nurses need to have some idea of what children, young people and adults at different ages need. And this also depends on whether they are girls or boys. The guidelines we use are the best we have available. Because we do not know exactly what is needed for very rare conditions, such as Alstrom syndrome, the aim is to lower the risk of the body developing problems later on in life and to keep your body in the best possible shape right now. If you think a car is a complicated machine, needing petrol, oil and water and regular servicing to work properly, then you 
are a whole lot more complicated. As we understand more about this rare condition, doctors are becoming more experienced and better able to manage it. The dietitian may have given you a guide to follow to help to make sure you are having enough foods from each of the sections of the eat well plate to meet your needs. It may be that this plan is a little different from the basic plan explained earlier. The starchy carbs or carbohydrate foods may be a little less and the amount of meat, fish, eggs, cheese, milk, beans and lentils a little more for you than for others your age. This is because there may be some health benefit for you. For example, lowering what is called insulin resistance. More of that later. And with a little more of the higher protein foods, you will feel fuller for longer. The amount of fruit and vegetables and fatty and sugary foods recommended will be the same as everyone else your age. You may know already about type 2 diabetes and it was briefly mentioned earlier in this recording, which can develop in some young people with Ulström syndrome. This happens when the body is unable to keep the amount of glucose in the blood at a normal level. Glucose is the sugar the body uses for energy before someone has type 2 diabetes, the body gradually starts to need larger amounts of insulin to control the blood glucose. And this is what is known as insulin resistance. In other words, the insulin is not working as well as it should and more is needed than before. The pancreas is the organ in the body which makes the hormone called insulin Hormones are special chemical messengers made in different organs of the body which carry instructions to another part of the body. We make lots of different hormones for all the different messages which are needed. You might need to check blood glucose to see your glu glucose levels at different times in the day and may have some medicine to take to help your pancreas work better. If you have insulin resistance or type 2 diabetes, it is known that choosing carbs that are digested slowly can help to keep blood glucose levels at the right level. Foods that have this effect are known as low GI foods and the opposite type of carb foods are those with a high GI. For example, sugary foods which raise the blood glucose quickly. GI is the short way of saying glycemic index. You will help to keep the blood glucose level stable if you have at least one low GI food at each meal. The good news is that if you have a low GI food, the benefit will last until after the next meal. The foods which are low GI are cereals containing oats, porridge, whole grain and granary breads, ones with lots of seeds and bits in them, pasta, vegetables, fruits, beans and lentils, milk and nuts. Having some of these foods will also help to make you feel fuller for longer and they are often higher in fibre. These higher fibre foods you may remember from earlier are the ones that are good for our gut and help prevent constipation. You are nearly reaching the end of this talk. So, to just finish off, having an understanding about the role of food in the body and how this relates to you and your feelings can help you to make the best choices about what you eat, how much and when. A healthy body is also linked to how active you are. And this is something that you will need some extra help with to achieve, to make sure that it is part of your everyday life. 
I hope you have enjoyed listening to this recording. If there is anything you would like to know more about or chat about, ask to speak to one of the medical team or your family. Just remember, whatever choices you make about food and activity, it is the best you can do at that moment. This is an exercise you can use which is about food cravings. A craving is something which you can't stop thinking about so it can happen with food. You might want to just listen first time and then you can practice doing it as often as you like. You will find it gets easier to do as you get more experienced and then you will remember how to do it without even needing to listen to the recording. So, get yourself into a nice, comfortable position. You may wish to close your eyes and relax by taking a deep breath in and then breathing out. Imagine you are slowly blowing up a balloon, taking as long as you can to gently blow up the balloon with just that one breath. Now, do this twice more. A deep breath in and gently breathe out. And again, breathe in, then breathe slowly out. That's great. Now, allow your breathing to just settle into a rhythm, a nice, easy movement of your chest as it rises and falls. That's right. Very good. Next, take a few moments to check out your body and notice if there are any areas which feel a bit uncomfortable at the moment. Send the next few breaths to any area which needs it. Or you can just continue breathing normally and naturally. Now, think about the food you are craving in your imagination. What does it smell like and look like, taste like? Build up a picture of this food and you might be able to notice what colour it is or imagine it to be like. Take a few moments to do this. Now change the colour of that food down to paler and paler and paler colours. And then just to black and white. Taking all the colour away. Think about the taste gradually being taken away. So it is not as strong and eventually you can hardly taste it so it does not seem so interesting anymore. And lastly, I would like you to shrink down the picture of this food in your mind to make it smaller and smaller and smaller. Push the picture of the food you have in your mind out of the way so all you have left is a blank space. Now, check if you are still craving this food. And if the craving has gone, you can just remain there relaxing for a few more minutes with your gentle, relaxed breathing. And come out of this relaxation 
feeling great, calm and relaxed when you are ready. If you still want to eat the craved food, then check out what the food looks like now in your mind. Turn down the colour again to black and white and the size of it to shrink it down and then down some more. The taste of it just gradually disappears until it has no taste and then there is nothing left of that food. It is gone. Relax as long as you want and open your eyes when you are ready, feeling refreshed, calm and really great.